I've heard, I've read the stories, the accusations, and I laugh, and I'm sarcastic, and then I cry because it's very emotionally upsetting. Oh look, Bumblebee. Hello ladies and genitals. Today we're going to be talking about Paul Breach. Basically, he did this like really weird video where he kind of just sat and shouted at the wind for six minutes and five seconds. He basically just sits there and complains about things for no reason. I genuinely think that once in a blue moon, when he notices his views are dropping slightly, he goes, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to make a video for someone to make a video on. Because the shit he says is just so stupid and pointless. But there's always a couple of gems in there that makes you think, yep, you know what? That's fucking weird. That's video worthy. That's the Paul we all know. Not love, just no. Apologies if this is like a crazy long waffling sort of post, but like it's well documented on TikTok. I've had to put up with a fair bit of crazy, crazy behaviour. Right, first of all, I'm gonna say it now, if this is gonna be six minutes and five seconds of Paul acting like he's never done anything worthy of criticism in his life, I will eat my PlayStation controller. I will sacrifice my ability to play Need for Speed. I'm not sure what that would achieve, but you know, it's, it's a retention thing, eh? Please watch the video to the end. I'm not sure if Paul does these things for bait, because anyone who knows who he is or knows anything about him would hear these comments and they'd be quite annoyed. Because because this is a grown man with an extremely creepy digital footprint. Like, I don't think it's unfair to say that Paul is a bit of an odd lad. I'll play a few things that he's done. Oh, there's a plane crash in Tanzania! Oh, into the lake! Weird, right? And this man is in his mid-40s, by the way. Maybe even older now. But honestly, I do sometimes make, when I make these videos, I'd sit there and think, I dread the day that I have kids. I'm old enough to sit back and look at the dangers of these people and try and advise people to avoid them. Imagine you just sitting there, right? You see your child is aimlessly scrolling through TikTok, as they do. You know, getting brain rot before it even develops. But then you get up out your seat because you want to fill up your glass of water. You want to get a new coffee. And you walk past their screen and see this Donnie. I guess I am genuinely worried for the direction that we're heading in. And it's time to highlight the fact that this crazy behaviour isn't actually normal. Um, and it, like, you've all seen it all over your FYPs or you've seen it on other creators. You've all seen bits and bobs that people do that you're just going to take a step back and go, no, that's not normal. That's not, you wouldn't, do that in normal social settings. Now, Paul, this would be a great video of yours, and I would say, well done, if you were talking about looking in the mirror. Breachy boy are saying other people are weird. And I'm assuming he's talking about people who react negatively to his content, so to speak. You know, he gets people filming him in public, which, yes, is kind of weird. But also, I think Paul may be referring to people who make videos on him. Paul, people make videos on you because you give them a reason to. If you just act like a normal human being, people aren't gonna see the stuff you do and think it's weird and then think, oh, tell you what, I'll make a video on that to warn people of him. And then people aren't gonna comment about what you're up to because you just be a normal person. If you do things that aren't normal, people go, hang on, that's not normal. That's just how these things work. It's a fairly simple concept, no? For a competent human being, maybe. But the fact that this man here is trying to talk about normal social settings, that's an extremely baffling concept to me. Not because I don't leave my house and I'm too scared to speak to people online. It's more the fact that nothing about this man's life is normal. This guy sits on live stream all day where people have to pay to speak to him. He has literal human interaction behind a paywall because he's scared of the negative comments. He's scared of people telling him how it is. He also just films himself in public. What's a normal social setting about that? And he moved in with a teenager whilst in his mid-40s. Normal social settings though, Paul. But because social media, you feel entirely and and everybody can share an opinion, everybody's safe behind whatever accounts or what you want to do is like okay and it's a giggle and it's fun and it's a moment in time. But you wouldn't behave like that like in general outside. That sounded almost threatening. Safe behind keyboards? What do you mean by that, Paul? Are you threatening me? Are you gonna do me in? <laughs> Scary. Are you gonna punch me, Paul? Wouldn't be the first time he's ended up in a police van, though, would it? I could write a book on all the crazy, crazy, crazy fantasy stories bandied around left, right and centre 
about me. I'm sure there's a few other creators who could do exactly the same. Yeah, what exclusive club you're in. Paul Breach, Alpha Burr and Chelsea Liard. Nightmare blunt rotation. But anyways, big Mr. Author, providing that you can actually read and write, go ahead, write your book. Who's stopping you? I refuse to believe that if you sat there with someone and sat through the structuring writing process, they wouldn't call the police on you. And perhaps such a self-reflection session, it would actually make you think, you know what, maybe I'm not the victim. Maybe I am a weirdo. Could you just imagine getting a commission, coming along and having a writing and structuring process with Paul Breach? Christ on a bike. There's some minutes where you just think, well, I said the word the and and if in a sentence. I wonder how that's going to be escalated into some sort of fanciful story. I think it may be a talent to be this numb in the head. My guy is just saying words and they do not mean a thing. And Paul, I don't think it's always necessarily the words you say that people have an issue with. Yes, they contribute. There are many, many, many weird things that he has said, but I think, to be honest, the issues people have is kind of to do with your actions. They speak a bit louder than your words. That's the big issue we all have, Paul. So go on, crack on with saying those words. Because honestly, saying those words there is better than geo caching with teenagers and then moving in with one. But of course, you know, poor Paul. People are holding him accountable to things. However will he cope? I recently, I have, you know that music playing app? You know the one with the green lines? You know that one? I don't know what you can say on here because, you know, they've got the rules and stuff. So Sorry, um, Paul, when have those rules ever stopped you? Those dreaded rules. Arg, those rules, eh? Always stopping me. Because they've always been a factor in the past, haven't they? It's funny how he doesn't know what they are, though. Well, it's not. It's not funny at all. It's just typical Paul. Oh, what's he like? Always up to no good. Just read the room, Paul. Talking about rules as if you give a shit. And I got a friend of mine to send me her playlist. Yay! Crazy times. This friend is in her 20s. So like an adult. An adult. Okay, so just to confirm here, someone in their 20s is an adult. So hypothetically, Paul, if you were to interact with someone, date or even move in with someone younger than their 20s, does that mean they're not an adult? We might need some clarification on that. Like you mentioned earlier, those pesky rules, eh? And as I say, I've heard, I've read the stories, the accusations, and I laugh. And I'm sarcastic. And then I cry because it's very emotionally upsetting. Oh, look, Bumblebee. Oh, look, it's a teenage girl's dad on his way to get his hands on you. But maybe I'm weird to have some sort of small hope in me that maybe Paul will eventually take one of these allegations seriously. Like, I always have a small part of me that hopes when I make these videos on people, they can have that sort of self-reflection to have some sort of upwards trajectory, even if it's a small one. But to hear someone have a form of self-reflection and then just love, and most of the time, the allegations are literally people giving their first-hand experiences. And you know when Paul actually gets affected by them because he ends up making statements similar to one of these here. He sits there in his prison cell with his green, green walls, wearing the same clothes for like a week straight, and then basically just laughs at the trauma that he gave to somebody. Yeah, classmate, got any bets on? But yeah, just hearing someone laugh at allegations like this, it just leaves a sour taste. Social media. But I'm hoping, like the intelligent side of people will start going, no, nah, this is just weird. You can have, oh, I don't like you, I do like you opinion. That is normal. Every single person does that. But when you start going deep and start moaning that an adult talks to an adult on social media, you've got issues. Okay, so Billy Bear Ham here is reflecting on an incident where people found out who his next victim is via his Spotify following. This is the person in their 20s in which Paul was referring to earlier. But Paul, people don't find it weird that an adult speaks to an adult. People find it weird that someone in a position of influence, or dare I say power, uses that to speak to people half his age. You were possibly in your mid-20s when they were just a sperm in a wrinkly scrotum. That's the issue that people have. Because let's be honest, and this is probably safe to assume if Paul is saying that they're in their 20s, let's be honest, they're probably just 20. So in this case, I don't think it's fair to say that someone has issues merely because they're just looking at the people that you talk to. If it was a regular person on the streets, yes, it would be weird. It just would be. But when you have a history of speaking to people much younger than you, or because you have a following, then people are just keen to ensure that you don't affect anybody else. All of this could just be avoided if you just grew up. You know, go on Hinge or something and set the age barrier to your age. Then 
people won't get weirded out by you speaking to people straight out of sixth form. It's a pretty simple concept, isn't it? You can use that one. Feel free. So all in all, I think the one with issues, well, I think it might well be you. You genuinely think that you're a teenager, which is weird. That's odd. I could maybe call it an issue. And people need to start stepping in and saying, this behaviour online is not right. This guy's head is full of air. You strange, strange man. I actually think he genuinely believes everything that he does on the internet is socially acceptable. I'm not sure it's for bait anymore. My mind has now been changed. I honestly think he believes it. I just can't wrap my head around this. Anyways, this man infuriates me, so I now need to lie down. So that's where I'm going to leave today's video. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, please do feel free to leave a like and subscribe. It's completely free, but it helps me out massively. And uh, yeah, cheers. Bye. Thank you.